Oh, we're putting on the boots today. Uh-huh. You know what that means. Chevy, you coming with us? You got the whole back all to yourself? A nice little bed? Timmy's. And Chevy's. The best of them all. Chevy. <laughs> He's a little less nervous in my vehicle for some reason. Yeah, there's more room for him back there. Spacious. I'd like to have a full-size pickup eventually. But uh, uh, one day, far in the future. Not on the plans right now at all. Not even written down anywhere. Not even in the future plan book yet. It's not even on a goals yes. list. No, not even in the, well, it's on a bucket list. It made it on the bucket list. In there. Yeah. So we're gonna go see a few more uh, Manitoba attractions today. See how many we can get done. I think we might be able to cross off six. And we're also taking- Six? Yeah. Holy smokes, you're ambitious. Six in two hours, eh? I think so, because they're all around sort of the same area. Oh, okay. I think. We'll do our best, guys. We'll do our best. We'll learn a little bit more about where we're from. And we'll let the Chevy go for a Chevy run. Hey, Chevy. Blue rims. Wouldn't be my personal choice, but it doesn't look bad, but it sure stands out. If you want your vehicle to be quickly identifiable, you either get a custom license plate or you spank some bright colored rims on it. Everyone will know exactly whose car was there. I guess as long as you're not getting into any trouble, it doesn't matter. So we ended up at the old flying hook. There's a familiar sight for you, eh? Haven't been to one of these in a couple of weeks. Chevy, you remember these? Where's mom going? I know, that's all you're worried about. Needed a bathroom break. So the first site we're gonna go see actually isn't even on the 101 uh, roadside attractions in Manitoba. I don't know why, because it's an important and a special one to me. It's the Mennonite landing site. I'm gonna Google it here for you right now. Mennonite Landing, that's what it's called. This is the spot where my family landed on the shores in Manitoba when they first set foot in Canada in 1876. At least on my mom's side, we have the records. And uh, this is a Mennonite Memorial Landing Site. Is it gonna give me a uh, description? So there is a monument there, and I don't know why it didn't make it onto the website, but we're gonna go there because it's there and we know it's there. So it says, it's a monument at the confluence of the Rat River and Red River in the rural municipality of Rishot. It commemorates the arrival of the first group of Mennonite settlers in Western Canada on August 1st, 1874. Sorry, I said 1876 in the last clip. It is 1874, the site is right. Uh, it's when they first stepped into Canada at that very site. They took a paddle boat up the river from Fargo. They came from uh, uh, Northwestern Germany and the Netherlands, and uh, they took a boat over to England. They went to Liverpool in England uh, by train, I guess. From Liverpool, they took a ship and landed in Newfoundland first, and then went to Halifax, then went down the St. Lawrence River, past Quebec City, past Toronto, then they took a train from Toronto down to the ship port, I guess, which was on the Great Lakes. They took a ship through the Great Lakes, and they landed in Duluth, Minnesota. From there, they took a train across to Fargo, North Dakota, which is down the road here. And in Fargo, they took one of those big steamships. It was like a paddle ship. They took that up the Red River into Canada and where the Rat River and the Red River meets. That's where the ship docked and landed and where they first stepped foot into Southern Manitoba. So we just turned off Highway 200 here, which runs along the Red River. The Rat River is right down there and it meets the Red River, which goes that way towards Winnipeg. 
and we have the diary of from my mom's side anyways I think it's my mom's great great grandpa my mom's great grandpa I don't know the first one is that this is where they first set foot in Canada when they first got off the boat it was just down here on the riverbank I can't believe this isn't in there so there's actually 102 that we're gonna go and see in Manitoba. 102 roadside attractions. So we're left to Christmas. See some artwork in there. Oh yeah. I know that they didn't used to have this sign here, but recently they've had to put this here because people were driving their cars in there and wrecking the site. It's the first time I've ever been here. It's where it all began for us and our story out here. By Jack Foulet. Look at this beautiful artwork here. Actually, he did a great job. Nice. Good job, Jack. I think it says Jack. Yeah. So I'm walking on the exact soil that my ancestors walked on when they first, first stepped foot here. This is what they saw. Oh, and there's a monument plaque right there. See the Rat River goes in there. We'll go check that out in a bit. Let's see what this says over here. That's the plaque. Owen has a picture of the steamship that they took, the paddle boat that they took up from Fargo. Looks like it could use some revamping here though, it's a bit old. Yeah, Mennonite Memorial Landing Site. This is the site of the first landing of Mennonite settlers in Western Canada on the 1st of August, 1874. The International A steam-powered riverboat landed here with the first contingent of 65 families. My family was one of them. Who Between, knows, maybe mine were on there. Yeah. Between 1874 and 1880, some 7,000 Mennonites came to Manitoba from German-speaking colonies in South Russia, or what is now Ukraine. The majority arrived at this spot, making their way six miles east to the Jacob Schantz reception houses near Niverville. From this base, they established some 54 villages in the East Reserve, present-day rural municipality of Hanover. Many of the settlers would soon relocate to the West Reserve, Janzit across the Red River, in the vicinity of present-day Winkler and Altona. Others established a third settlement block along the Scratching, the Scratching River in Morris. These Mennonite men and women were among the first Europeans to establish farm communities on open prairie. They also became known for successfully transplanting their non-resistant, church-centered ways of life. We gratefully acknowledge their, what is that? Bequeathal? We greatly acknowledge their bequeathal of courage and faith in God. And the trip to get here took them, I believe, three months from when they left. And uh, a lot of the children on the journey died on the way here. And there's actually uh, graves along the railway in Ontario where children died on the trip because they were in such close quarters and back then sanitation wasn't a thing like it was today. A lot of them died on the journey and everyone who died on the seas, on the open sea out in the ocean, coming from Europe over here, they were just buried at sea. The records we have of our family, I believe they had two children that they lost on the journey here. All to get here, to the land of freedom, and away from where they were, where they were being oppressed because of their religion and their faith. So they started off in the Netherlands and in Germany, and uh, they got pushed out of there uh, by the churches in the area there. Like I said, back in the day, everyone was fighting over religion. And uh, they moved to uh, East Europe, where they settled and were happy for quite a while, and then... Russia took over. That was in the days of the Soviet Union, I guess. Well, it was 1874. So who's in charge there then? Present-day Ukraine, anyways. And so they sought freedom in the New World, in Canada here. And we're still here. Look at me. <laughs> I'm still here to this day. And this is right where the boat docked. So the Rat River goes down that way. And that's the big, mighty Red River. I guess that stick marks the spot where the boat was. I don't know. Not sure exactly. It's my first time I've ever been here. 
little bit muddy down here. Chevy, you might not want to get your paws all muddy. Come this way. Chevy, come on. So we were just down there. Apparently there's another pier over here, you say? Yeah, just another fishing spot. Another fishing spot. Oh, okay. A little trail leading through here to the red. Oh, okay. I see, like a natural pier. Oh, and look at this. There's like a little drainage canal in here. It looks like it was man-made. Interesting, yeah. Imagine coming up the river here, eh? In a paddle boat, completely unfamiliar with the land. Nothing was developed. There was nothing really here. Not very much, anyways. There was some. Not very much. And not knowing you just traveled across the, the world, having family members die on the way just to get here. And when you get here, you got to start from scratch. This is all you see. You got to clear the bush uproot the trees, level it, find wood to build shelter, build your home, all before winter. <laughs> And now, uh, the municipality of Hanover, I believe, is actually the most prosperous area of Manitoba. So they've done a good job. They were successful. Come on, Chev. I guess for me, it's a big landmark, but I guess for other people, like, most people wouldn't even know this was here because it's just on the banks of the river, right? And there's the... A plaque up there, and then this is the trail they would have walked up. You gotta remember the Mennonite community is very small compared to the French community in Canada. True, because so. well, Quebec have a whole pro. I mean, the French have a whole province. Yeah, exactly. We don't get our own province. Chevy, come on. We just get our own municipality. <laughs> yep, and we're a quiet bunch of people. Very, uh, most of them are not like me, sharing and talking to the world. Most of them are very closed in and uh, tight-knit community. So I wouldn't blame people for not knowing much about us. Okay, we'll go see one more. We were, I was gonna go see the ones in Altona today and Stuart Burn, but we don't have time for that today. We'll save that for another day. We have time, we just don't have sunlight. Yeah, that's what I mean, the sunlight. <laughs> the sun's going down on us real quick. It's only 3.30 and we're already racing to beat the sun. Yeah, less than an hour till the sun's setting big time. So just down the road from here, those of you who have traveled down Highway 75 in Manitoba, south of Winnipeg, have probably noticed a tiny little church between the highway. That's actually one of the landmarks. A beautiful little church. It's called, it's just called Small Church. <laughs> and I don't know if there's any info on it here, but we'll have to go and check it out. There's a tiny little church right between the highway lanes, so right between Lord Selkirk Highway. Let's see what that's all about. I've always wondered what that's doing there. Yeah, I don't know. It's cute though. I've always admired it every time we've driven by. driveway on this side we might have to access it from the other side pretty sure that's where the driveway is how many of you have seen this 
This is a popular route for anyone coming to Western Canada or going to the Eastern US from Western Canada. Yeah, we're gonna have to go to the other side. Go turn around. There it is. Your destination is on the left. I see that. Nice little U-turn right here. Big dually. Yes. It's a nice looking truck. Just a beast. So the Red River is just behind that house over there, just off to the right. This highway follows the river towards Winnipeg. And this highway turns into Pimbana once you hit the perimeter. Or once you hit St. Norbert, I guess. See, there's the river down there. There she is. That's a small church right there. And I wonder why it's here. Like, do people actually hold services here at one point, I wonder? Uh -oh. Probably at one point. There's a cemetery here. All the members of the church? Only ones that can fit in there? <laughs> they have a highway address, 35106, Provincial Highway 75. Huh. There's gotta be a reason why this is here. I mean, it's not much smaller than our house. See, it's got like a chimney right there. That was probably the only source of heat when it was built. It's probably got a wood stove in there or something. Yeah, a little bell tower. Mm. They took the cross down on the top there. It did used to have a cross up there. It's right between the highway. See, you got Highway 75 South going down that way over there. You got Highway 75 North going up there. So these people here who have been laid to rest get to be serenaded by the beautiful sounds of 18 wheels humming past on both directions. You know, this would be a great place to be buried for that reason. You know? Maybe this is where I should be buried. Right between the highways. Exactly. She said so I can always hear the humming of the truck tires in both directions, right in the middle of the highway. This would be fitting. Be ideal for you. It, there's a lot of room here yet, so it looks like it's not full. I don't want to walk on any of them, so. I want to see who was buried here and when. Why? Samuel Leonard, John Emery, 1867 to 1997. And Margaret Elizabeth, what does it say, 1870 to 1945? I don't think that's 1997, I... No, it says 1897. Eight, what? 1897? Okay, we can walk beside it here. Get a little bit of a better look. Someone needs to come here and take care of these. They're falling over. That says 1867 to... 1837? No, that's a three. 1937. 1937, so 1867 to 1937, and his wife lived from 1870 to 1945. So his wife outlived him. Okay, so it was in the 40s that they were buried here. This one was, this one's a newer one, 1985. They're all the same name. Famulener. Famulener. Femulene? Femulene? It's probably French, right? I love the tire sounds going past here all the time. So these three here are one family, obviously, and you get another family over here. James and Martha, 1858 to 1928, 1944. A lot of women outliving their men over here by quite a bit. She lived till 44, he lived till 28. He was born in 1858. This one here, this is the Cox family. Yeah. Wow. Oh, this guy, this guy was a pilot in the Royal Air Force. They're military graves, I bet. I bet you that's why the men died so early. They probably died in war. Oh, World War I, or possibly just after, 1928. That's not, that was between the wars. 
But this was Sergeant Pilot Harry K. Cox, born on the 4th of March, 1923, killed on active service. 1942, he died in World War II as a pilot. Mm. So, I'm pretty sure this church looks like it's been moved here because those cinder blocks underneath there, it looks like it's been placed down here. And I'm pretty sure someone once told me that this was moved here. No plaque. Yeah, no plaque. Huh. Yeah, we have no idea. It's a mystery. Yep, it's a Manitoba mystery. Do you know anything about this church? Let me know down below in the comment section. It'll be a very nice resting place. Oh, it's all got like uh, that weird glass that you can't see through also, eh? So that was super neat. So if you guys know how it got here, where it came from, or if it was built right here, let us know. What you got there, Weasel? What you got? People can barely see you. Speak up. That was a lot of fun today. Yeah, Just was. exploring around a little bit. There's not much we can do. And uh, exploring on our own like this in these is, is something to pass the time. We and just. Get us out of the house. Yeah, and get us <laughs> out of the house that we don't go crazy. We have a very tiny house, and it's nice to get some fresh air. And we just heard the news that our lockdown, which was supposed to be over December 10th, is now being extended to when? Uh, January 8th. January 8th. And they have officially outlawed Christmas. I'm being, a, I'm being a little dramatic here. <laughs> I know, comments are going to be, they, they didn't do that, trucker Josh. I guess the lockdowns are being extended into the new year. So uh, truck drivers, they are still able to work. They are still able to drive. It's not like uh, the trucking industry is shut down because the country wouldn't be functioning by this point. But uh, for reasons that I have discussed in past vlogs and reasons that are personal, uh, I am just staying at home right now and uh, keeping these videos coming to you. I do have a second channel, though, that I've... Uh, opened up there. I do have uh, other things that I have planned for the future. I heard the vaccine is supposed to be here next week. Really? Yeah, there's two different vaccines that are coming into Manitoba next week, so I'm gonna let uh, the doctors and politicians take it first <laughs> and see how it, they react with it. Right, Chevy? I'm not gonna be the first one to take it, but... <laughs> Chevy? Chevy's protesting. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Christmas! I miss Grandma and Grandpa! Oh my over! You guys following me? Well, Weasel is. Chevy's just hoping we're gonna go that way. What's out that way? <gasps> no way! You wanna go there? I don't believe you. Convince me. All oh, those eyes. Okay. Okay. Gotta put your collar on though, okay? All right, ladies. I'm coming out with you. Let's get some fresh air. 
Come on, boys. See, we got the Christmas lights all the way around the fence, all the way around the back there that match the house. It smells like smoke out here. It smells like actual smoke. Where's that coming from? Someone having a bonfire? So these are the icicle lights that I put along the, the fence here in the back. I didn't have quite enough to go all the way around the yard, but I did have enough of these. Man, our old house was huge. What, did, what were we doing with all that space? Like really, we didn't need a house that big. Why'd we have a house that big? Oh, these lights turned off over here. Oh no, I think I know what the problem is. I think it is right there. <laughs> yep. I know what the problem was. Fix it, man, to the rescue. Whoa, whoa, easy. It's that wire right there. Wait till you see the front. The front of the house is where we have all of our, uh, like about 10 to 20,000 lights. We, uh, every day we have regular drive-bys where people slow down and stop right in front of our house and just look at our Christmas lights out front. <laughs> it lights up the whole street. And it stands out even more because neither of our neighbors have lights. Our one neighbor over here has a, a few lights, but uh, the other neighbor on the other side has nothing. And then there's us, just, you can see us from space. So we've got Frosty out front of the house here. And we just realized now that his body is backwards or his head is on backwards. <laughs> you see the buttons? Exorcist Frosty. The buttons facing the house, but his head is facing the street. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> My dad and I did that right before we moved. That's funny. <laughs> but anyways, Britt wants to dive into this a little bit so that she can kick my butt. She has a memory unlike anything I have ever seen or heard of in my life. <laughs> it's a little freakishly good. <laughs> she can remember minor details that I don't even notice. And she'll list off every little detail like years later amazing so when it comes to trivia games well if it has to do with the holidays or christmas or something you're interested or in movies <laughs> or books we're good but other than that but yeah, it's time for me to get out of my daytime clothes I already got my sweats on you've already got your pjs on mm -hmm. so it's that time again thanks for joining us today hope you guys are having a great time wherever you are and hopefully you guys can have a great christmas the only things that they uh, eased up on was they're allowed to have drive-in services for churches now, which was dumb. They weren't even allowing churches to have people drive up, park in a parking lot, and sit in their own vehicles while listening to a service. That's allowed now. So there was enough protest from Southern Manitoba about that. So they at that least allowed that. that well, goes, if you're in your own vehicle, like, what does it matter? These restrictions are ridiculous. But there's that. You're allowed to sell Christmas decorations now and Christmas presents and uh, no family gatherings will be allowed though outside of your household I think they might ease up on a thing or two more like clothing yeah you'll need clothing eventually will that be considered for Christmas I don't know because like people need clothing that is a necessity <laughs> but that's where we're at now so it's been extended just like we thought it would be and we'll see we'll see how this next year goes I mean I'm trying to be patient I'm trying to be understanding uh, what's going on. I don't know what's going on. We'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. All right, but today is finished. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and there'll be another video tomorrow.